Boys and girls, thank you for joining me once again where people continue to be wrong on the internet. This is not a recidivist offender. This is a first-time offender here on the channel. This is a bloke called Veris Ahmed, who claims to be a polymath and claims, therefore, to be an expert in a field that he clearly isn't. Uh, caveat, I have not watched this video through from start to finish. I've watched the first few minutes to decide whether or not there's enough grist here for my mill. Seems there is, straight away, in the first few minutes alone. So let's deal with Veris, Veris, I should say, Ahmed, who wants to tell us all about nutrition and stuff. All right, Veris, let's have it. And we'll put you right where you're wrong. Hi, everybody. Today, I want to talk about longevity versus physical development. Okay. And how... The two require different nutritional protocols. Not necessarily. And I want to talk about the type of diet or nutrition. Diet, yes. Nutritional protocol I recommend because I've had a lot. Well, of what qualifies you to recommend any kind of dietary protocol to anybody? I don't see any mention of qualifications on your channel at all. What's your experience if you don't have qualifications? Don't know. You just claim to be a polymath. Um, which you then dispel any risk that you might actually be a polymath very, very soon in, in your video here. But we'll get to that in a minute. A lot of people question me on this, and I want to provide some clarification. So first off, I don't believe that there's one best diet for all. That depends very much on your operational definition of one diet and best diet. Because there is one best diet style for every species. For example, you should not try and feed a vegetarian diet to an obligate carnivore, should you, Varus. That would be the wrong thing to do. You should not try to feed a mixed macronutrient omnivorous diet to an animal which is either strictly herbivorous or strictly carnivorous should you virus no human beings are such a species that does have a particular nutritional requirement in terms of the niche that we've developed in over it seems like probably at least the last four and a half um, million years or so and as such there is actually a nutritional niche that's appropriate for human beings with mild alterations between individuals for optim optimization of various things. So your statement there really depends. You're making an absolute statement there. There's no one best diet, you said. Well, how do you define one diet and how do you define best? Let's watch on and see whether you get this right. Anybody who does tell you that is an extreme charlatan. Okay, so anyone who tells you that there is one best diet for people is an extreme charlatan says this individual who is about to show himself to be in fact himself an extreme charlatan good carry on there Barris. we'll let you uh tie the tie the noose yourself and uh, then you can be hoisted by your own petard as it were you should ignore them Completely. Yes, you should ignore people completely who are extreme charlatans. And in looking at your uh, subscriber base, your viewer accounts, and the um, effectiveness with which you have managed to attract people to your channel, Varus, I think they're already doing that, which is a good thing. However, you have come across my radar. That's uh, that's unfortunate for you, isn't it? What's next? Individuals have different biochemical needs yes very very slightly our genetic makeup our organ system makeup the way we function as an organism differs not hugely between individuals of the species as it as it turns out in fact at the at the base level of operation there are a wide array of things that can go wrong in the health status for individuals absolutely but the underpinnings, the basic workings, functioning, programming, via our genetics, etc. Almost identical. They have different nutritional needs depending on their age and their aim and the level of organ function that they have or the diseases which they may be suffering. Sure, slight differences. Slight differences. 
There is no one diet that's best for everybody. It just doesn't exist. Okay, so if you're suggesting that there are there is one diet that has an exact macronutrient makeup and an exact actual constituent makeup and there's no variation between people at all, then you're right. That there is no one size fits all in that regard. But in terms of should human beings all eat an ostensibly very, very similar diet between individuals across all people based on our physiology, our biology, our genetics and everything about us, then the answer is yes, we should. We do have a specialist niche as, as a particular species. So I want to talk first about a developmental diet. Okay. And this is something which I had written a book about, Nutritional Fortification and Physical Development. Oh, well, anybody can write a book, Ferris. Apart from me, because I can't be asked writing one at this time. Perhaps one day I will, if I get enough in advance GoFundMes or whatever for such a thing. But frankly, books don't impress me. Writing books don't impress me. The work involved in writing a book is, yeah, I don't want to do that. Um, the returns often on books, the production of books, not what they should be anyway. Anyway, you wrote a book. Okay, well, whoop de do. Development. And it is something that's suitable. I think it's the most ideal diet for individuals who are uh, basically toddlers, children, teenagers, and young adults who have not... So the nutritional needs don't change throughout that span of time slightly within a given individual, do they not, Varus? Really matured into their uh, physical um, genetic potential, you could say. It is not for matured adults who are in their post-reproductive years. And essentially, uh, my thesis is, is that when you're... Your thesis? Mm -hmm. In those younger years, you should aim to eat the... Uh, highest quality foods of the most nutrient dense foods well number one who's to determine what the highest quality foods are Varys? you and number two is nutrient density the most important thing because the answer to that question Varys, is well the answer to both those questions is no no you should not i don't believe be commenting on what the most quality foods are and neither is nutrient density the most important factor. So, mm, naught for two. And not starve yourself of any macronutrients. So uh huh. Keep talking, keep digging. Here comes the noose. No vegan, no carnivore, no. Right, well, there you go. Now we know who is a complete charlatan. Now we know who it is that has absolutely no idea about human nutritional requirements, human biochemistry. Or any of those kind of things. There you go. There it is. We're done here, Barris, pretty much. But we'll give you the respect of hearing the rest of what you have to say because that's the way I do things here. But you're done, son. You're a charlatan. You're a person that's full of their own. Um, well, you're a legend in your own lunchtime, is what I'm saying. I mean, anyone who describes himself as a polymath clearly has an ego issue before we even get started, okay? I, for one, am an absolute expert in several fields of endeavor. I am not an expert outside of those fields. Neither are you, son. In fact, it sounds like you're not an expert in any given field. Okay? Just things to think about, son. All right, what's next? No keto. You need a high car. All right, so... Ooh. High protein, high fat. All right, so you've never heard of the Randall cycle then? We'll hear that again because I was a bit interruptive on what he just said. You need high carb, high protein, high fat. There you go. You need high carbs, high protein, and high fat, says Varus. You're done, son. You're absolutely finished in this space as a nutrition expert because you're not one. You have absolutely not the first clue of what you're talking about. There it is, right there. Never heard of the Randall cycle. Clearly never heard of diabetes, chronic systemic inflammation. Clearly never heard of any of the sequelae of any of those kind of things. Clearly no idea of the, of the proposed mechanisms under which those health conditions develop. None at all. Okay, good.
And you want to do this in order to develop the skeletal system of your body. Well, hang on. What, what makes you think the skeletal system needs carbohydrates, fats, and protein? Because it doesn't. In development. It doesn't need those three things at all. Dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Wrong. Fully develop the organ and glandular system, increase skull capacity, and have the full development of your brain. Now, mm. a lot of people who have uh, impacted wisdom teeth, who have impacted teeth in general, who have, who were in so most people, most humans these days, because of the genetic drift away from our genetically pre-programmed dental arrangement, purely on the basis of the way that we've been feeding ourselves over multiple generations, yeah? Races, this is merely a symptom of a skeletal system and a skull which did not get to grow and mature into its full genetic potential. No. Wrong. Again. It's a combination between nutrition slash malnutrition and genetic drift. Mr. Polymath, Mr. Jack of all trades and master of none. Okay, wrong again. And so it shrinks in on itself because of uh, deprivation of uh, nutrition. False. That's only part of the story. And this causes the, the uh, teeth to basically impact on one another. So the genes have no impact, are they not, Burris? Mr. Jack of all trades. Interesting book on this is Weston A. Price's book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. Uh, in the indigenous cultures, there's hardly any dental decay. And, right, hardly any, yeah. And there's no dental misalignment. Nonsense. You've just said there is no dental misalignment in native populations. That is false. Demonstrably false, absolutely false, wrong, Varus. Again, rubbish. Everybody grows their teeth imperfectly. It doesn't matter. Everybody grows perfect teeth, do they? In so-called native populations, however you've operationally defined that. No, Varus. Wrong again. Which area of the world you go to, they all have perfect teeth. Wrong. They all have perfect teeth. No, false. Nonsense. And it's because they're obtaining the fat-soluble vitamins and minerals needed to properly develop a physique. Now, Nonsense. This kind of this way of eating, a, a developmental way of eating, where you're consuming a lot of carbs, proteins, and fats. And that's not a developmental way of eating. That's a that's a flawed way of eating. That's a mistake. That's erroneous. Human beings are a specialist nutrition wise, just like every other species on the planet. Okay, we are obligate hypercarnivores, Varus. Fact. The actual science leads us to that conclusion inescapably. Of course, the carbs have to be safe carbohydrates that haven't had glyphosate sprayed on them, or they're going to damage your gut. This causes an individual to grow and develop. I myself gained 70 pounds of mass eating that way. So who's to say that gaining mass is a good thing? It really depends on how that mass is made up, Varus, over what period of time it is gained, and whether or not that's at a stage when one should be gaining mass, actually. It's basically a lot of protein, pastured protein, a lot of very high quality pastured butter, a lot of high quality raw and cooked eggs, mostly raw, a lot of white rice. Lots That's a mistake. Of sourdough. That's a mistake. Uh, high quality orange juice. You're getting. There's no such thing as high quality orange juice. You know, the full spectrum of nutrition. We the full spectrum of nutrition for a human being is derivable entirely through the consumption of the muscle meats and associated fat of mostly large ruminant animals. 80% of the diet or so should be large ruminant animal, muscle, meat, and associated fat. Plus dairy, mostly the fatty dairy, and less of the sugary dairy, if you please. Grass-fed, if you please. Jobs are good in salt. Good stuff. No plant material, no carbohydrates, none at all. Jobs are good and done. That is the appropriate diet for a human being. Grass powder for the trace minerals. 
And, and so what all of this does, by not starving or restricting yourself of any macronutrients. Starving or restricting yourself. You can't starve nor restrict yourself of non-essential nutritional inputs. You can't be starved of carbohydrates because you do not require carbohydrates, not one single gram ever. That's not restrictive to eliminate from your diet that which is not essential in your diet. The purpose for nutrition, the reason that we eat varus, is so that we might live. It is not the other way around. That's not a restriction. I'll tell you what's restrictive, son. Living a life of compromised health, compromised longevity, most likely, compromised quality of everything in our everyday experience. That is limiting. Not eating carbohydrates isn't. What's next? Of course, the standard American diet doesn't offer this as a, at all because they're starving you of trace minerals. They're starving you of pastured organic high quality fats. Uh, the proteins are very poor quality and it's primarily a six to 12 servings of glyphosate sprayed grains a day diet supplemented with a high amounts of sugar, coffee, and tea. That's what the standard American diet is. And yes, and it's very, very bad. It's the worst diet anybody can consume. Probably one of the most malnourishing diets uh, ever experimented on a large population in the history of man. It will be remembered as that. But, you know, the kind of diet that I recommend for young skinny teenagers or uh, young kids or adults who are still in their early to mid-20s, you don't, uh, restrict any macronutrients at all. And what this does, again, the oranges, you have fructose. No. Fructose is one of the worst carbohydrates you can put into your body, Varus. That is a fact. Mistake. Your grass gives you minerals. You have a high quality carbs from rices and stuff. There are no high quality carbs. There are no carbs required in the human diet, not one single gram either, ever. And carbs do not differ in terms of their quality or their goodness in some way. Carbs are carbs. They all break down pretty much, with the exception of fructose, to the same thing, don't they, Varus? Metabolically, they are identical. Sourdough, uh, high quality fats from butter and eggs and meats and high amount of protein don't, don't limit anything. What this does is... Yes, you should limit the protein. There is an upper level. Well, there's an upper level of everything. The dose makes the poison on all sorts of things. Too much fat is bad. Too much protein is bad. You need to get the ratio about right, which does differ between individuals very slightly, and I mean very slightly, from a starting point that I would always start somebody out at and say, right, well, we'll find your sweet swap somewhere within a very, very narrow range of these numbers, and I give people those numbers to work with Varus. So there is a limitation as to what is, and in actual fact, your satiety signaling and your hunger signaling takes care of the stuff pretty well anyway. You will crave that which you require. With, I mean, the only thing you should really ignore in terms of cravings is those for carbohydrates. Because we're also programmed to crave carbohydrates precisely because ancestrally we could not get very many carbohydrates. And so it was an opportunity for the body to absorb rapidly and easily a bolus of foodstuffs, which would be body fat sparing. That's the sole role for taking in any carbohydrate at all. And in fact, carbohydrate was available to most human beings in moderate to small amounts several times a year if we were lucky for a very short period of time. Now, of course, they're available to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we can go and fill ourselves up on carbohydrates whenever we want. We are still genetically programmed to want. It's still bad for us. We don't. We shouldn't do that. That destroys our metabolism. It destroys our body. It destroys our health. And you, Mr. Polymath, sitting there saying to people they should eat a bunch of carbohydrates is dangerous, contraindicated falsehood on your part. It is destitute of competence in an area that you have no business whatsoever talking to the public on. This is absolutely disgraceful behavior on your part. You should stop this. You should stop it today. You should take this video down. You should probably shut down your channel until you can get your ego under control, actually, son. And um, learn to make videos about things that you actually are expert in, which, as I understand it, is nothing. So don't make videos, okay? Or maybe make videos about your 
cat doing something amusing or whatever. Okay, but you're in no position whatsoever to be instructing the public on any aspect of nutrition or physiology or any of these things, clearly. All right, what's next? It gives you the full spectrum of the building blocks to develop a physique. So does eating meat and fat. It gives you the full spectrum of everything you require to do that. That's basically what it is. Now. Would I recommend this for someone who has cancer? Of course not. It's going to make the tumor grow. How do you know that? You're now an oncologist as well? Idiot. Would I recommend this for someone who's past their 30s and who gets lethargic and fatigued when they eat a steak? Of course not. Uh, it's going to fatigue you harder. And it's going to be Nonsense. Absolute rubbish. A steak is going to fatigue you if you're over 30. Goodness gracious me. Wow. Make you age harder. There's Makes you age harder. Good sciencing there, Varys. Awesome. The difference between developing a body with healthy food, which is suitable at young age, and then on the other hand, uh, longevity. And if you're probably past the age of 30, your body has already settled in to what it's going to achieve in this lifetime. Oh, right. So everything that happens after 30 is pointless, is it? You absolute buffoon. You total charlatan. You are Dunning-Kruger on feet. Okay? This is ridiculous. Unless you take synthetic steroids, which will really... Oh, right. So the only way to have a reasonable, worthwhile life after age 30 is to take steroids. Thanks, Varys. You're doing well, son. Keep it up. Screw you up, possibly. Oh, that will screw you up, possibly. There you go, PEDs will possibly screw you up. Mr. Expert in absolutely nothing. And a longevity diet, what every single study ever done on longevity. Oh, here we go, every single study ever done. Now you want to talk about every single study ever done. What's the bet he cites not one single study ever done? He has in common is uh, caloric restriction. No. False. So those who there are no studies on longevity that did not involve caloric restriction, are they not? <laughs> wow. Wow. Eat the least, have the least disease, and live the longest. No. Not necessarily at all. There are one or two studies that have proposed an associative relationship between some of those factors under certain circumstances, in a limited population for a limited period of time, under almost no control or effective observation of any kind. What's next? If you look at the Maasai, okay. How do we suddenly get to the Maasai? I thought you were going to give us a talk about every single study on longevity ever done. And then you made a ridiculous, false, imbecilic statement which showed absolutely no understanding of science or its process whatsoever and now you want to change thoughts again in mid-flight now we're going to go to the messiah okay tell us all about the messiah now go on and i look at the messiah their elders when they reach a certain age stop what age up consuming protein completely because it can be very fatiguing to digest required nonsense there's a lot of digestive effort on the part of the digestive. Just because one group of individuals have decided, apparently, at some age, which you haven't noticed or told us what it is there, Varys, they all stop eating meat, apparently, which again is another false statement, because have you spoken to every single Maasai elder ever lived? Or currently living? Have you done that, Varys? Have you gone and actually spoken to these people? Have you gone and observed what they actually do? No, I thought not. Okay. Organs, right? The pancreas, the gallbladder, the liver, the kidneys, the stomach acid. None of those things are fatigued by absorbing the absolute nutrient that we are designed absolutely to build our bodies with. Our body structures are built with proteins. We get those proteins from the muscle meats, mostly, of large ruminant animals. 
There was nothing fatiguing about absorbing, digesting, and building our bodies in that way. It's a normal, natural process. Uh, and when you're in old age, as you age, your body deteriorates and has less of an ability to digest, absorb, and utilize. The no false. It has a lowered requirement for building blocks, generally speaking, because generally speaking, the metabolic rate tends to slow down as the cell lines of the body age. So less nutrition is required for that reason. Also, you'll find that as people genuinely do get towards old age, their activity levels generally tend to decrease, commensurate with the decrease in their metabolic rate of living, etc., etc. It's the body's attempt, among other things, to stretch out the lifespan and eke out every last day, week, minute, second of life prior to death. God, this boy's got no idea about anything, has he, at all? Nutrition from your foods or repair. So why would you want to go on a developmental diet? You can't digest that much. So if you're suggesting why would you want to eat a whole truckload of food, the amount of food, for example, like you might have eaten while you were in your or pomp, in your 15 to 20 years old age range, for example, well, of course not. Your nutrition needs do change as you age. Nobody's arguing otherwise. But that's got nothing to do with whether you should consume carbohydrates in your diet because the answers are still the same, Varys. Irrespective of your age, you should do no such thing. There is no place in the human diet for carbohydrates. Not one gram ever. Some people who have deranged their metabolic system really badly by subjecting their metabolic system to the damage that it will experience if you feed yourself any significant amount of plants, or indeed your parents do in your formative years, usually, that can have lifelong effects, meaning that you become behooven to that and you do require some carbohydrate in order to function at all. But in the normal natural state, a human being behaving according to their instincts in the world that we lived in as our genes developed the last at least 350,000 years of experience as a human being, bar about the last 10,000 or so, they were, they, it, human beings were not obese. Human beings did not have um, significant dental caries and uh, orthodontic malformation, etc. We didn't have brittle bones. We didn't have diabetes to speak of. Heart disease basically wasn't occurring at all. All of those are modern disease processes resulting in stepping away from our biological natural design and thinking that through technology we are able to do better than nature did. It's arrogance that's the problem here. And it's clowns like you telling people that they ought to eat a significant portion of carbohydrate in the diet. Varus, they should do no such thing under any circumstances, except with the caveat of a small number of people that I've just mentioned who do better with a very small amount of carbohydrates purely because their system no longer functions the way it should. I have in my career dealing professionally with people on their nutrition and health and etc., I have come across two individuals with metabolic systems so damaged that they require some carbohydrate to function. Two. Out of thousands and thousands of people I've dealt with. Okay? So, what's next? I mean, imagine it. I know a lot of people, even in the 40s and 50s, they go carnivore, and they feel much better because they have a cessation of their symptoms, and that's totally valid. There you go. We're done. However, eventually down the line, you're going to exhaust your organs. Nonsense. 
absolute rubbish. Show me some evidence to support that ridiculous claim. No, I thought not. Because digesting food, especially meat, it's easier to digest because it's not fibrous and it just slides through the digestive tract. But especially when it's cooked, you're relying on high amounts of stomach acids, bile. Uh, from the Lucky that we normally naturally produce those things. Gallbladder and um, enzymes from the pancreas to digest this food. And that yes, no, again, same argument. Lucky that the human body normally, naturally, and easily produces all of those things in the required amount. Doesn't come for free. It's very similar to the sexual fluid. You can't always be excreting sexual fluid. Oh, for God's sake, son. Really? You really are a buffoon, aren't you? You really are an absolute buffoon. You are not designed to be constantly secreting sexual fluids, idiot. You are designed to absorb and digest proteins and fats, those proteins having come from the muscle meats of large ruminant animals, mostly and those fats being the ones attendant with that muscle meat. One meal a day, perfectly sufficient. Done deal. Goodness sake. But you'll break down and degenerate. Well, the digestive fluids are much the same. No, they are not. Not at all. As you age, you have less of the ability to absorb nutrition from your food and use that nutrition to rebuild You've already said that it was wrong the first time and it's still wrong. Digestive fluids again and digestive acids and enzymes. And thus, as this degradation occurs over time, you have less and less of an ability to digest. The, the degradation of your body functioning occurs as a function of multiple inputs, varus. Disposable soma is one of those things. Cell lines reaching the end of their natural life span due to the decrease in telomeric length per cell division. Oxidative damage, glycative damage in some cases. All the generalized senescence causing inputs, multiple. Protein and the absorbing and digesting of protein and fat are not among them. They are not the causes of dysfunction as we age. Goodness sake. In the first place, so what the Maasai do, back to the Maasai. Yes, back to the Maasai for some reason. Is as they age, they almost completely limit protein. They yes, you've said that already, and it proves nothing. A cream from milk, and they have a animal fat in the form of soups and broths. Um, if you watch my video, why fat is the key to longevity, why protein causes aging, I put the card up here. Protein does not cause aging. False. Absolutely false. Again. Wrong. Okay. I basically showed the Maasai talking about this, that you know, they're elder men. There are no studies available anywhere in the literature that would support that ridiculous claim. There is a mechanistic speculation around mTOR. It's absolutely, fundamentally ridiculous from the ground up. There is no evidence that protein causes aging. Why would it? For goodness sake. As they age, they only consume fat. You've said that and it's not true. Saying something that isn't true multiple times doesn't make it any more true, Varus. It still isn't true. <laughs> Let's go into modern context, modern people. The majority of us... So the Messiah are not a modern people, are they not? Do they not exist right now? Could I not go there and find them? They're modern people, Varus. C-sections, fed baby formula, given high fructose corn syrup from the age of, what, one or two, um, six to 12 servings of grains a day, vegetable seed oils, antibiotics every time your body had a flu, or every time your body had a cold or a virus, which is merely a detoxification process. No, it isn't. Again, absolute rubbish. <laughs> now you are denying the existence of bacterial and viral pathogenesis. Polymath. No, you're an idiot. 
You're a poly idiot, is what you are. Every time we had that, we were given antibiotics, which further... Anybody who seriously believes that bacterial pathogenesis and viral pathogenesis does not exist should unsubscribe from my channel and get the hell out of here right now because you're not going to get along with me. Okay? Get yourselves gone before I... Because you'll, you'll have to make a comment. You won't be able to help yourselves. And I'll do it for you. So save us all the effort. Get yourselves out of here. Not interested. You're not welcome here. It's rubbish. We are here to learn about science and what science can and cannot inform us upon and what it has and has not hitherto informed us upon. We are not here to tolerate vacuous, mindless, unscientific opinions like every single thing that's come out of Aris's mouth just about in this video. Okay? Hope I've been clear. Impair organ function and stay in the body almost permanently for 99% of people. Oh, 99% of people. Great. Where did you get that number from, Varus? Please provide a citation that provides us with the evidence for the claim you've just made about 99% of people. Shall we wait? Because remember, Varus was going to tell us all about every study on longevity ever done. We're still waiting for any comment on that. That's correct. Uh, there's 100,000 chemicals in our environment, in the food, water... 100,000 are there? No, there's more chemicals than that in our environment, Varus. Where did you get that number from? Shall we wait for a citation on that? Goodness gracious me. Wow. All of these are neurotoxins. They damage organs and they stay within the cellular membranes and deep tissues of the body. So... The majority of us in our mid twenties have the organ, uh, the organ function, and the hormonal profile of an eighty-year-old indigenous man. And this is why. Where did you get that from? Shall we wait for a citation on that claim? Still no. I thought so. Okay. Right. Good. I think we'll move on. Hormone replacement therapies and testosterone replacement therapies are so prevalent and common today amongst men in their twenties and thirties, and also women. Well, that's to do with inappropriate, unsupportable, disgraceful malpractice by physicians at large, Varus. That's the issue there. Of course, men in their 40s and 50s forget about it. Forget about what, son? What shall we forget about in our 40s and 50s? It's because of, again, what has happened to us. So, the Maasai man, he may stop eating protein. Oh, back to the Maasai again, yes. 70 or 80 and go on a high-fat diet. But for us, we don't have the same organ function as them. We may start to feel... We do, in fact. We have almost identical genes as the Maasai men. I think you'll find Varus. We really do have almost identical function as they do. Like an 80-year-old man at the age of 20, 30, 40. Well, you've said that and you haven't backed it up with a single thing. And which is it, 20, 30 or 40? This is just noise exuding forth from your face, Varus. This is just mindless, brain-numbing, absolute incompetence, vacuousness, and destitution of competence at all, actually, in this subject matter. I'm a polymath, he says on his description on this channel. No, you're not. You're an absolute buffoon. You're a fool and you're a charlatan of the highest order. You're also a projectionist, suggesting that anyone who says you should eat a species-appropriate diet is a charlatan themselves. I think we've seen quite clearly who the charlatan is here in this video. I really do. Please do leave me a comment underneath the video there in the comment section, though, boys and girls, to let me know which one of us it is that's the charlatan here. Which one of us needs to go to school and learn something about physiology, nutrition, anthropology, or any of the things that Varus absolutely claims to be competent in. And at that point, you have a choice. If you want to extend longevity, you have to do a 90% fat diet. False. Absolute false. Another falsehood. More ridiculous, contraindicated, pustulous rubbish from Varus. Or what I recommend for longevity, uh, 
Well, what qualifies you to recommend anything for longevity to anybody, Varus? At all? What? Where is your competence? Because we haven't seen it in this video, Sunshine. This is something which I myself have personal experience with. Oh, right. Well, how old are you, son? Because you're talking about longevity. What experience do you personally have with longevity? Have you experienced longevity yourself? Or are you still basically just out of diapers? Goodness gracious. And it's something I learned from various masters of longevity, but what you would want to do... Who are the masters of longevity, Varus? And who is it that determines who the masters of longevity are? By what criteria? Is consume the most nu raw, nutrient-dense foods in the most pre-digestible... Foods do not need to be raw, and neither do they necessarily need to be nutrient-dense to satisfy all the nutritional requirements for a human being form, which give you the most nutrition, but require the least amount of digestive effort or taxation on the part of your body's organs or systems. These are examples of this, okay? Um, you do like something I incorporate in my diet. It's uh, called, I call it the almond formula, but it's basically soap spouted almonds. Oh my God. If your credibility wasn't already subterranean, less than zero, Barris, now it's minus several billion. Are you stoned? Is that what the issue is here? Wow. Uh, blended with coconuts and coconut fat. Then you pre-digest it with a probiotic, kind of like a how a sourdough is pre-digested. And what you essentially have there is an extremely high concentration of minerals and protein which do not build and develop the body, they just sustain the body, and it's completely pre-digested. No digested effort on your part at all. Nonsense. Once again, just rubbish. For example, right now, I'm 6'1", 205 pounds, and I probably eat between 1,200 to 1,500 calories a day. You can't eat calories, Varus. Calories are a measurement of heat. You cannot eat heat. That is impossible. What you consume is an amount of mass, which you are falsely equating a certain metric, the calorie, to, on the basis that you falsely, erroneously believe for some reason that such an estimation of the actual effective energy derivable from that mass that you've consumed can be measured using a calorie, because it can't. I've covered that in great depth on my actually science-based, actually experienced channel. Perhaps you'd like to go and watch those videos, Varys, and you'll probably learn a great deal about many things, including why it is you should probably never make another video. Perhaps. What's next? I'm able to sustain uh, optimal brain function. <laughs> yes, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Mass and great energy by eating this way. If I go back on a developmental diet where I'm getting high carb, high protein, high fat, and build the body, I'll get... Well, you shouldn't be doing that, okay? If you put a whole bunch of carbohydrates into your diet, that will mess you up, of course. You're lethargic and fatigued. Yes, I wonder why. Maybe it's to do with the effect that those carbohydrates have on your system, buffoon. There's different ways of eating at different times and in different ages. Yes, very slightly different but not including any plant material or carbohydrates at all at any stage. With the exception of the carbohydrates found naturally in mother's milk, human mother's milk, or indeed the very small amount of carbohydrates that you actually find naturally occurring in the meat. Okay? Back to this topic of hormonal depletion. So you really are all over the place, aren't you, son? You, did you have a plan for this video? Did you have any kind of script at all? You're just all over the shop, and nothing you are saying makes any sense. Nothing you are saying has any veracity, correctness, or utility in the real world. This is just utter hogwash. What are you doing? The reason why, if you may tell a young man today, a young boy, an eight-year-old, that he... An eight-year-old is not a young man. An eight-year-old is a child. 
perhaps is not a boy that he is a girl he may what okay those of you who weren't already done with Varus, suck on that one for a while hmm he actually believe you because he actually feels this eight-year-old boy feels like an 80-year-old man so this assault on our indoctrine indoctrine system is so bad now at this point that the kids the kids are having uh, the hormonal profiles of senior citizens and there's various yeah, but there's a lot that goes into that virus and it's not just dietary dietary does play a, a big role in the fact that hormonal balances are going wrong for even children but that's not the sole answer there's a lot going on ways to reverse this and it's not easy but you I mean, have a look at the amount of estrogen in the water supply of, mun of most municipal areas for example have a look at the fluoride levels that are pumped into those have a look at the amount of carbohydrates these children are being fed have a look at the amount of fructose that's going into their systems. Have a listen to the garbage that's going into their ears from every direction just about. It's no wonder society is falling to bits at the seams, Varus. There's no wonder at all as to why that is. We'd use the infrared sauna therapy and search and other protocols, and I'll get into this uh, in other videos. I haven't shared yet, but I was autistic at one point. I developed a form of... Oh, you were autistic at one point, but now you're not? Okay, I actually am on the spectrum of autism, Varus. I understand autism quite well. Okay, and for you to suggest that you are no longer on the spectrum, if that's what you're about to do, sorry, son, I've got bad news for you. Okay? Brace yourself for it. And it was because of the amount of heavy metals I was poisoned by. I had several various incidents. Heavy metals are not the cause of autistic spectrum presentation virus. They are one factor that may potentially have an impact. Goodness sake. I was poisoned and I lost brain function and the capacity to uh, be able to communicate and hold eye contact. But I instinctually knew that I could reverse it, and that's how I got into health. Uh, now, speaking on masters of longevity who, who are practicing what I just Okay, so who are these masters of longevity, and how are they practicing longevity? Because it seems to me that you uh, live until the point where you no longer live and you stop living, you die. Um, so how do we know that these people are practicing longevity? Who are they? Talked about eating raw, strong, pre-digested foods. No, you shouldn't eat pre-digested foods. And foods are meat and animal fat, virus, not plants or carbohydrates, not ever. Offer a lot of nutrition, but tax the body's organs very... You've said all this already, and it was nonsense the first three or four times you said it in a circularly insane manner. Little, I have virtually no taxation on the body's organs. There's various individuals who are practicing this in modern and So who are these various individuals, virus? Brian Clement. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> uh, right. So not only are you destitute, Varus, of any competence in any area, actually, in particular, not only are you not a polymath, you are also completely, apparently, singly unable to be remotely competently critical of the veracity of others brian clement is the holder of a diploma mill phd uh, printed on a laser printer somewhere in the caribbean at some point he is also the um, founder of the criminally negligent misanthropic organization, the Hippocrates Institute, along with his wife. He has been fined large sums of money at various times by various authorities in the US and ordered to cease activities around illegally practicing medicine.
This is a charlatan, a buffoon, an imbecile, and another individual with a very, very serious ego problem. Okay? This is also a promoter of veganism. The very thing you yourself said at the beginning of your video makes him a charlatan, and you're correct on that one point. And now you're going to put him forward as an expert in nutrition. He's no such thing. Goodness, 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 Varys. Wow, I hope you watch this and I hope you learn something from it. Hippocrates Health Institute. Yes, the Hypocrites Association, yes. Seven. Lou Corona, he's 70. He's someone I learned a lot from, him and Brian. Victoria Skolvinskas, uh, I think he's in his late 80s. Uh, Gabriel Cousins, he's in his mid 80s. And, you know, they're doing wow. Every single one of the buffoons you've just named identifies, as far as I am aware, as a, as a priest of the High Church of Anorexia Vegana. Amazing. There are other various masters of times past from, from India and the Orient. You, you want to put this guy's a master? <laughs> Have you heard this guy speak even? This is Gabriel Cousins, by the way, for those who want to know. Another card-carrying priest of the Church of Anorexia Vegana. Just listen to this guy speak. And also, notice that nobody will sit in the first six rows of chairs. Okay? Because he's rabid, literally cannot control his salivations and spits uncontrollably, for example. Not a single cogent thought comes out of this man's mouth. It's just, well, it's very much like the sort of thing that comes out of yours, Varus. Singularly lacking in logic, progression, construction of any kind. Undisciplined, nonsensical rantings. Rabid rantings. Okay? Sorry about that. Thanks, though. You live to 150, 200, and even longer. I'll get into that in a different video, but the primary way they do this is that in their post reproductive years, they grow sprouts or they go. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, oh. Sorry, boys and girls. Behave. Ted. Goodness. What sort of ship are you running here, son? Right. Wild herbs which are growing in the wild. Uh, wild herbs that are growing in the wild. Good. And they consume those. They primarily subsist off of those. What Brian yes, they subsist. So their metabolic rate slows. So their lifespans may be extended in their dotage. But is that the goal? Just to live longer? Well, for some people, that might be their individual goal, and there are many different ways you can achieve that. But to do that with good, robust health, and to do that in such a way as it adds something back to the world in which you're living, providing some service to that world in some way, well, none of the people you've just named are doing that, Barris. None of them. They are all criminally negligent, criminally misanthropes, um, or criminally misanthropic individuals is what I should have said there. They are all folks that, in my humble opinion, ought to be behind bars permanently for their misanthropy, for their misinformation of the public, an unsuspecting public who think for some reason that what they have to say is remotely valid or utilitarian or supported by actual science in any way. Right, what are you going to finish with? Clement, for example, does, and what Gabriel and the Chorus and Lou do, is that they grow a sprout house, either in their patio, backyard. They are sprout houses. Wherever it may be. And they harvest the raw living plants, which are alive and living in real time. Alive and living, good. The raw, alive, living plants, good. They're grown in very rich soil, which is almost like uh, in engineered with the most, engineered with extreme consideration for the biology and mineral content of the soil and this offers essentially what the wild deers are doing what all the wild herbs yeah but we're not a wild deer are we 
we are a human being, and our nutritional niche is hypercarnivore. Not sprouted seeds full of toxins, because the seeds will put toxins in there, precisely to prevent animals from wanting to eat them. No? Okay. Divorced animals are eating. I mean, imagine steak. Although... I am right now. Mmm, steak. Ah. Well, it's, you need it to develop. Yes. And to maintain yourself as well. It's butchered somewhere in the Midwest. No, my steak is butchered right here. In fact, much of the steak eaten in this house comes from animals that live on this property, or lived on this property. Here, on this farm. Okay? They freeze it and ship it to you. You receive it in the... No. <laughs> no. Supermarket, perhaps a month ago. No. Two months later. No. The home kill team comes in. They dispatch the animal in a humane and relatively non um upsetting situation for that animal that's about to be sacrificed they take the animal away they butcher it they bring it back not that long later all in plastic bags that we can put in the tub freezer here if we want to freeze it which we will freeze some of it obviously because we can't eat a whole cow at once some of it we have beautifully fresh never been frozen never been to a supermarket it's great. Not all the meat we eat here is of that kind. We still do get some of our meat from butchers. Yes, we don't. Um, we don't get all our meat from this property precisely because we don't own this property. This is a rental situation, and the meat that we get from the farmer is as and when he decides to give us some. Okay, but a lot of the meat we eat here is from animals that lived here. There's a lot that you lose in that process. It's not the same as hunting an animal and eating it on the spot. Yeah, well, obviously. There is an electro- However, there is perfectly sufficient nutrition in even butcher and supermarket bought meat. It is all there in the amount that's required. Prior to moving to this property where we're eating some meat off this property, when we were eating all meat from supermarkets and from butchers, we weren't suffering from nutrient deficiencies. Virus. That wasn't happening. So what was what was missing? What was deficient? Nothing. Logic again, though. Actual cogent thought process, logical construction, you know. Magnetic force and electric principle in nature which sustains and animates the entire universe. And when an organism dies, this electromagnetic force... Oh, God, really? Really? Wallace Thornhill? Now? <sighs> wow. It starts to dissipate rapidly. It essentially is what the soul is. The soul is electromagnetic, the spirit is electromagnetic, and they are, animate uh, physical organic bodies. Now, plant foods, what's cool about them? So, another opinion based on absolutely no understanding of anything whatsoever, certainly no science. Of course, the idea of the soul of a creature is just that, it's an idea, it's a construct. It's metaphysical in nature. It's beyond physics. It's beyond science. We cannot prove nor disprove its actual existence. We can explain our experience of the universe as we see it as a collection of impulses and various excitable tissues in our central nervous system. We are unable to even determine the actual reality, the actual existence of reality itself. Varus. <laughs> okay. 
metaphysical. Claim is that you can grow many different types in trays as sprouts and harvest them on the spot, and you have a readily available dose of electromagnetic nutrition. Electromagnetic nutrition. God's sake. So this boy doesn't even under, understand electromagnetism and basic particle physics, quantum physics, quantum electrodynamics, or any of this material. This is just noise coming out of the mouth of a self-claimed polymath who is actually clearly and patently destitute of the first clue about anything he's talking about at all, and actually is someone who, it seems to me, could do with some help dealing with his autism spectrum presentation in a more effective way than he currently is doing. As I say, I speak from experience. I've been there. I've done that. I am on the autistic spectrum myself, and I have done a lot of work over a significant period of time in moderating its effects on the way I interact with the universe. Perhaps Varus could benefit from doing something similar rather than spending his time making this kind of video, which is only going to attract um, criticism, derision, um, because it's so fundamentally destitute of veracity, correctness, scientific merit of any kind. It's, it's noise. It's opinion after opinion after opinion. There is no science behind any of what he has had to say here whatsoever. And frankly, he's made a bunch of blanket statements that are not only false, but ludicrous in the extreme. Really sad to see, unfortunately. Anyway, what's next? There may be a lot of skeptics about this. <laughs> I wonder why. But when an individual has a heart attack and passes, why yes. is it that paramedics don't give him a vitamin or water? Because it's beyond the point where vitamins and water are going to be useful once you have a myocardial infarction occurring, virus. That's a medical emergency which has developed over multiple decades into a situation where that person is now in a state of dysfunction that will lead to their death. In order to resuscitate him, they attempt to give him an electric charge through a defibrillator. We are electromagnetic beings. Everything is electromagnetic. It's one of the fundamental forces of the universe. If you even believe that there are different forces, they're only viewed differently in different circumstances depending on how we look at them and for what purpose. It's to do with symmetry, um, which you should probably go and study if you want to start talking about physics at all, Barris. Okay? Start with Emily Nurther or Nurta. Work from there. Okay. I hope this clarified some things for you guys. Yeah, it did. It clarified exactly what your level of competence is in talking about health, nutrition, anthropology, physics, science, or any of that kind of stuff. Varus, it's none. I'm sorry, son. It's absolutely none whatever. You've pointed directly to your destitution of competence. You've pointed to your buffoonery. You've made a fool of yourself here in this video. And it's unfortunate. I wish you hadn't done that. However, you did, which made it fair game. I've now dealt with it. Finish off, though. I know it was a lot. You have any no, it was nothing at all. It was waffle. It was noise. It was completely without a single thing to recommend it at all. Questions, please comment in the comment section below. If there's anything else you would like me to cover, also comment. I'll get to it as time permits. But again, to summarize all this, for longevity, there's one way of eating. For physical development, for children, there's another way of eating. It's slightly different, yes. Then if you have certain diseases, there are, there's another way of eating. It depends on what the diseases are, yes. But none of the advice around how you should eat in any of those circumstances should you get from Varus? No. Hugely incompetent. Dangerously incompetent. 
uh, and I say dangerously incompetent because the Dunning-Kruger on this boy doesn't allow him to understand the depth of destitution of his own competence or lack thereof. Okay? There's other things I want to... Yeah, but Varys, you shouldn't be advising anybody at all. That's totally inappropriate. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Not really, no. Thank you and have a wonderful day. I will, and you have one yourself, Varys. I would say perhaps you should spend much of the next few days at least investigating, finding some people who may be able to help you with some of the issues that you, uh, you clearly have there. Okay, in the meantime, if you choose not to do that, that's your thing, absolutely. But what I would suggest to you is that you stop immediately, cease and desist immediately from attempting to make videos about health, nutrition, science, physiology, physics, or any of those things that you claim to know a lot about. You are not a polymath. Son, I'm sorry. Y you are you are an absolute buffoon. I'm sorry. There's no other way of putting it. Okay? Please learn something from this. Um, the first thing that you need to do is get your ego under control. Seriously. Okay? I'll leave that all with you. That's up to you, of course. Um, and my people, the opportunity is for you to comment below as to what you think of all of this. Don't forget to super chat me all your funds, of course. I'll look after them for you, put them to good use. Um, mm. Dear, dear, Paris, dear, dear. Right, join me next time when someone else will be wrong on the interwebs because it doesn't look like slowing down anytime soon. Shall we have some music? Why not? Two, three, four. <laughs>